In this video, I only want to talk about in 30 minutes exam related questions for employment based test. Uh, it may cover some Microsoft Office specialist certification, but see if I have covered all the exam objectives and you might be good. You may need to read a few more topics. But for employment based test, I'm going to try to cover enough questions and answers that prepares you to at least get 80% and higher. And usually the employment based test, there is a a basic test which could be 25 to 30 questions or power user test which could be 25 to 30 questions and sometimes they can even give you a whole test which is around 50 questions and a lot of these tests are timed and you don't get to repeat you get to repeat the questions but you cannot skip it I believe in the Microsoft test you may get to skip it but not in these tests so I've started Microsoft Word 2013 a lot of the stuff I show you here will apply to 2010 even for 2007, a lot of the things will be the same. And if you find that this video is going a little fast, I have covered a separate video for 2007 and 2010. It's the two parts video, which you can watch. I'm going to try to do all of that in one video here. So when you start Microsoft Word 2013, I can start the blank document right from here. Or I can even search for templates. So I'll just start the blank document. Now you will get questions about opening files. So you go to File, and then you click on Open and then you start it. Um, you might start to see questions about asking you to open files from OneDrive. So you just click it. This is Microsoft's cloud services so you might start seeing it and if you don't see the file here in the list you can go to computer and then you can browse to it. So even in recent documents I can go here and I can pin this so that means that this will be always be on the top. You can also open new files from here and you can do the same thing, blank documents, so look for templates, search for it, or go to the topics. You also get questions about saving files, so you click save, and then you choose where do you want to save it. If you don't have it listed here, you go to the browse button, and then you can choose the location, and you can type the name of the file. So usually they'll give you specific instructions about giving it a name. So I can just call it document 3 and if they don't ask me to uh, put a new folder you don't need to do it. Sometimes they'll tell you that and now I can hit save. So now the file is saved. You also get questions about save as. So you click here and then you go to save as and then I can click on my documents. Now sometimes they'll ask you to add a password as you are saving it. So to do that you go to tools general options and now here you can type your password to open and then you you can also enter a password to modify if you wanted it and then you click OK and it will say and I'll type the same name I click OK now if I save this file it will overwrite my original document 3 with the new password so that's the way you do save as you get questions about printing so you go to print you can choose how many copies and print it. You can choose what printer. You can also choose whether you want to print all the pages or you can type the numbers here. Now the way you type it, if I can put 1-5, it will only print 1 to 5, comma, 15, comma, 20. So I can do that or I can put hyphens. Okay. So these will be the basic questions about printing. You can also get questions about sharing. So if I click on share, and the questions a lot of time in sharing is about email. So you can send it to people uh, via email. So Microsoft Word will automatically get an attachment, and you can then just type the name of the person. For, but for this to work, you may need to have uh, Outlook set up. And you can also send it as a PDF if you needed to. And because uh, 2010 and 13, Microsoft started adding more emphasis on cloud services, you can start having options to invite people. So if you get questions about that, just be familiar with this idea of sharing. And also you can present this online because then Microsoft creates a link so you, that you can email people and everybody will be able to see this document online. That's the benefit of the cloud services. You also get questions about exporting. So you can click export and then you can create a PDF file out of it. You can close the account if you, sorry, not the account, close the Microsoft Word. There's a question about that, very simple. You may get that. So these are some of the really basic things that you need to know in terms of the basic questions. 
you get questions about the QAT, what is known as the Quick Access Toolbar, which is right here on the top. So they'll say add a print preview shortcut there. So you click on this drop down button and then you can click on the print preview button and the shortcut is added. If they ask you to add like a macro or something, a shortcut to a particular macro and it's not listed, you go to more commands and then from here you can choose the button and add it or from the popular command change it to macros look for the macro and you can add it so you can see this type of a question you may also need to just be familiar with this idea of what is these things are known as tabs and this is the whole ribbon system so you can actually create your own tab and if you need to know a little bit more about it watch my part one I'll just briefly show it to you so I'll click here and I'll go to more commands and I'll go to customize ribbon now right here I can click on new tab and I can rename this tab and I can re click rename and type my name now I can start adding buttons from here to these groups and the same way you can also add the developer tab so if I click it you'll start seeing that on the top I click OK so now you see there is the Amir tab and also there is the developer. This is where you get all the lots of buttons where you want to create a form. They are listed here. So I can go back here, more commands and customize ribbon. And I can remove the check mark for Amir and also the developer tab and I click OK. So it's not there. So tabs. And you can create your own and you, because you can create a tab with your own specific button. Um, we'll just talk uh, some more questions which are related to what is known as the backstage. So which is nothing but this options. So if you come to this options, which is the same window that we saw when we went from this drop down button more commands and there is this customized ribbon and the quick access toolbar here. So they are listed here. So the questions that you will see listed in here will be related to save and they'll ask you to set your auto recovery to less time or they may say that your default saving document should be doc doc dot not the doc x which is the newer version they've started from 2007 but usually the save option shows up and so you just change the number what this does is it does an auto recovery every 10 minutes in this case so that if something happens to my computer it has already saved the last 10 minutes somewhere okay. some more questions in this uh, word options you can go to language and if they say to add a particular language then you can just add this from this drop down button choose the language and then add them so you can do that and in the advanced, and I'm just going to scroll down, you may get a question about how many recent documents can you see. So you can change the number here. So you can have that question here, which is in the options. And the last one is under proofing, and I'll talk about it while I'm at this topic. Is you may get a question about something called readability statistics. And to see that, you have to turn this check mark on here. And what it does is, after you've done a spelling and grammar check, it will give you a window telling you how good the language is on this document. So this question uh, threw me off the first time I heard about it. Uh, but this is what's called the readability statistics. So you turn it on by going to, I'll show it to you again, File, Options, and then proofing and there is the option to show readability statistics so this is where that option is set and I believe uh, there is nothing else need to learn in here alright so so that covers a lot of the topics about the basics of files but the options will be not in the basic questions this is more in the power user you may not get this as a basic part So I've just typed up some random things here so I can show you the rest of it. So first thing, uh, you may get questions about the fonts. You, so you might be familiar with this, the font style, change the style, the size. You can use this button here or this one. Now the important thing to remember is from what I've seen is a lot of the exams tests don't let you see the tooltip. Like when I point to a button, it tells me what it is. 
so in the exam you may not get it in these type of questions so you need to know what the B stands for so I won't be covering these in detail so be bold italic underline so these are standard questions that you will get in this uh, one of the topics that you need to know is in the font is when I go to this more functions this button stands for more and I can set this title to small caps so you'll get a question about this to set something as small caps uh, which is in contrast to all caps so this is the way you set it and I highlight and I set it and I go back and I can remove it if you get a question about just changing it to uppercase then from this AA button you can just change it to uppercase but this is different from small caps uppercase is all caps where everything is the same size in in small caps the T is larger and everything else is in capital but in a smaller size so these are the questions about font um, you get questions about font color please use this button and not the highlighter and you might get this new one because this is newer in 2010 where you can apply some of these effects so they might say that uh, apply a certain outline so the way to answer the the test and to prepare for it properly is to understand where the font buttons are and then you can kind of navigate and find your button through this way okay. uh, you get also questions about cut copy paste uh, which you might be familiar with it. I won't be covering it here I do want to talk about format painter what format painter does is say if I increase this size and give it a color and make it underline and if I double click on format painter then I can highlight something and now this word becomes exactly like it so that's the format painter and I press it to turn it off and I can hit undo to undo what I just did okay. uh, you get questions uh, about uh, bullets and numbering so be familiar with that I won't be covering here so this is bullets this is numbering um, if you do get certain questions about that so I'll just do this quickly where they might ask you to put a define a new number format or define a new bullet so you need to go to this option here on the bottom and then you can choose whether you want a certain symbol or a picture as part of your uh, bulleting so I can choose this and I click OK and then I click OK so now it adds that and the same thing applies in the numbering you can define your own leveling the way you want it to be and hit undo. Uh, you get questions about indentations so you can use this increase indent so if I click here and I use this it pushes everything and I can decrease the indent but if I just wanted to push the top line I'll use the tab key on the keyboard so that's the difference between using this indent and the tab key on the keyboard uh, you get questions about borders now make sure you understand the difference between borders and underline underline only applies to this and the border will be across across the line all the way end so if I click here and I choose bottom border if they ask you for bottom border there it is if they ask you to customize the border you click on the drop down button and go to borders and shading and then pick whatever style they wanted you to you get questions about line spacing so I highlight something and there is this line spacing option which I can make it 2.0 if I wanted to so that's line spacing and if I highlight my title I can make it center or right and for a lot of my paragraphs I can highlight it and I can make it justify which makes it look nice at the end rather than this the way it's ending justify makes it look nicer so these are the questions um, there is this button here for uh, sorting which I'll talk about it when we talk about uh, tables but that button is also part of it here and this button is called the show and hide button which will show you some hidden elements on your document which we can talk about a little later too uh, now we'll talk about quickly about styles if I highlight and they say apply a title style so there is this style here that you have to apply or heading one or heading two so that's where you apply it emphasis and there are more which you may have to click here and then you need to choose it so that's the way you apply styles find and replace you know that you can click it and look for a particular word within the document 
replace you can look for a word and then replace it with something else now for the replace there is a question which is very specific to do this I'll you know make some words highlighted and make it bold so I've got two words that I've made bold and the question will tell you that find all the words which are bold and then replace it with not bold so this is a little tricky so if I go to replace I'm not looking for a word so I click on the more I go to format drop down and then I go to font and I'll say that I'm looking for bold and I click OK so you see up here it will say find bold and if you ever wanted to remove it you can always use the formatting and I'll go to replace and I'll go back to format font and I'll say replace it with not bold and just to show you what will happen I'm going to make that color red and I click OK and I can hit replace all and it says two replacements done and there it is red so this is a very interesting feature that you can also use it in your day-to-day -day life and under select you might get options to select all objects uh, another interesting thing is select similar format like I'm not looking for a word I don't want to select words I'm looking to select some similar format so let's see if I click here in the choose and I click select similar format you see those two words are highlighted because they have a similar format so this is a new feature and you may get a question about that and it's very useful so that covers this home tab uh, let's go to insert and I'm just gonna click here and hit enter you'll get a question about inserting tables so you click insert and if they tell you three tables three rows and you click it and then they might ask you to type something or not and one of the things that you need to start getting very familiar with to be very successful in the test is to understand that the contextual tabs you see for the table they have table tools when you have pictures you'll have picture tools if I click outside it's not there when I click it so you will be able to answer any questions they give you regarding tables in the table tools regarding pictures in the picture tools because it would be very difficult to know all the questions but if you understand that okay you know I'm looking to do something so let me see the design questions will be in the design part and for the layout which will be kind of related to adding rows removing rows and some other things will be here and if nothing else always think of right click if I right click I'll get options to insert and I can insert a row above so if I've added it so right click will work in a lot of the cells uh, in a lot of the exams so you can always use it if you don't know where things are okay. so contextual tabs are very useful I can click here and I can split the cell into two you can also get questions about uh, creating formula so say up here I have some numbers here and they might say put a calculation here to sum up everything that's above it so you look for in the table tools layout you look for formula and then you type the word equal to sum above it won't be there sometimes it might be there sometimes not and uh, you can type it all capital or all lowercase and I click OK and there is a total so that's an exam question that you can get and if you click here the whole table is selected because to, a lot of the questions might be related to auto fit so you select everything and they might say auto fit to contents or windows so you can use it from there or you can even right click here and then you'll get options for auto fit you can also use the options for text directions which is here and also here you might also get a question about um, sorting so that's the option here sort because it's a table you can put things in alphabetical order again it's under layout and uh, you can also get questions about deleting a table it's right there and one last thing that you might get is convert to text so if I click it and it will remove the tabs so now I don't have the table anymore so that's the way you do it so under insert you've got the tables if they ask you to add a cover page right there blank page right there insert page break right there so this is the way you look at the question the question will usually say insert a table there is your answer insert table insert a 
blank page. So your answers are always there in the question to a certain extent. So you will always can find it. You get questions about inserting date and time. So insert date and time. Choose the kind you like or whatever they've asked you to. And then you can also choose update automatically so that tomorrow it will have tomorrow's date. You can get questions about inserting pictures, so you click it and then you navigate to wherever the picture is and then add it. Now again, a lot of the questions will be related to the picture tools where they'll ask you to change the picture style, so there it is. And here, a lot of the times they will tell you to change the picture style to reflected rounded rectangle and that will show up in your exam. Or they will say that when you click on your more, they'll say that second row third so I go to first second third column and then then you click it you also get questions about uh, wrap text so you click it and then you can choose to be through so all the words work around it and there are a lot of other wrap text options and then there is color options and things and you can always find it by right clicking to wrap text options you might get a questions about rotate so there is this rotate option and you can rotate it or if they give you a particular number you can use the more rotation option and then enter that rotation number here whatever they want it to be I've seen these type of questions where they get really picky so just remember whatever the question is look for it in the tools and look for that particular word and you'll be able to answer the question. You don't want it, you click on it, hit the delete button. So under insert, you can do that. You get uh, questions about inserting shapes, you click it, pick whatever shape they wanted you to add. A lot of time it's like an arrow, drag it and it's done. Now again you get formatting the tools and you can do the rotate, add shapes, shape fill, shape effects, so whole bunch of things they can trick you, but you just need to know where the answers are. Insert, you can add a smart chart, and usually they'll ask you like a, either a cycle or maybe a hierarchy chart, you know, where you can put CEO. So you click it, click OK, and then you can start typing either here or there, and then you can keep on adding. If they ask you to add, um, say to this one to add an assistant you right click on it always remember that right click and then looking for add shape and you can add an assistant so if you remember right click you will never be lost and also understand the smart tools because you'll find that a lot of the buttons are in there somewhere so if I go to design you'll find that there are buttons here like add shape they'll ask you to change the layouts for sure they'll ask you to change the smart styles for sure so you can do it and format where all the colors and styles are that you can apply for wrapping the text if you needed it and also position within the documents you can change it from here in certain cases I can click it and I can delete it same way you get questions about inserting charts so you click it um, choose whatever charts you want click OK and the chart will be ready and um, a lot of the times the questions will be related to the chart tools so here is my chart and in 2013 they show up right here the words so I can change the category to north south and they'll start to change here and I can close this window but a lot of the questions are in the chart tools styles adding chart elements changing colors and change the chart type so instead of it standing up it can be sideways they also have the options to do that from here too, chart elements, but you need to know this beforehand because in the exam you may not get this explanation. And in the format, you'll have some option related to the formatting. And you can always edit the data from this button. Okay. So that's under insert chart. If you get questions about adding online pictures, you can use this button and online video using this button. And just look into the store, just be familiar with it. They've added all these apps to Microsoft Word where you can have like scientific functionality and a lot of other interesting things that you can apply to this. Uh, you get questions about hyperlinks. So say I wanted to highlight this and add a link to it. So I can go to hyperlink 
and I can say link this to google.com so that can work or if you wanted to you could actually create an hyperlink uh, within your document too so if, if you had some bookmarks so say if I go down here and I highlight this word and I add a bookmark to it and I'll give it a name okay and I click add so that's a bookmark and so whenever I'm adding a hyperlink I can actually use that to that bookmark that I just created which is here placed in this document OK and then I click OK and there it is if I hold control and I click it it brings me to that bookmark so you can do it to websites and you can also do it within the document um, if you get a questions about inserting comments so that's the button you get questions about inserting headers so you click here and they'll tell you the header you need to use and you can apply to it and the same thing with the footer sometimes they might say to add a page number so you just go to the page number and then if they say to the bottom of the page then you go to the bottom of the page and wherever they want it to be you can also format the page number and you can change it if it needs to be different uh, one question you might get in relation to headers I'm just gonna go to page 2 and I'll go to header and I'll just add this one and I'll just put something here they might say that the first page should have a different page header so you just click here make it different first page so that whatever I type on page 2 will continue on to page 3 but not on page 1 so the page 1 header can be empty so if I scroll up page 1 header is empty so that's under insert um, headers uh, you may get questions about text boxes so just be familiar with that quick parts uh, not necessarily uh, drop gap yeah this is very common drop gap so if I choose this so it just looks makes it look like that you can also get a question about inserting word art and so you can choose and they'll tell you which one to use you know they say fill black or gradient fill so it'll tell you the second row second or whichever so you click it and then you type whatever it is they wanted to type and then there'll be quite lots of questions from the drawing tools about effects shape outlines or there could be something about align text text directions rotating so those things will be there if you needed it so that's the um, align. you can also get a question about signature line so you just click it and then you fill up all this information the name of the person and all that and then click OK and then it will show up at the end of the document where the person is supposed to be signing it uh, you get questions about inserting objects from file you can see that um, you get questions about adding equations symbol is very common so you can choose TM symbol or the copyright symbol or you may need to go to more simple if they are looking for something specific so that get covers a lot of the insert related questions in the design you can get questions about changing the themes so you just come here click on it and then you can choose whatever name they give you brand banded or basis you just choose it uh, you get questions about watermarks so in 2013 it's under design I believe in 2010 it's in the same place uh, but just make sure So under design you can go to watermark choose whatever it is or you can also go to custom watermark you can apply page borders also page layout tab so this is where we'll talk about all the um, margins so you get questions about did you make the margin from normal to narrow or moderate you can change it you can also go to custom margin because sometimes they might say make it 0 0.8 so you go to custom and then you change the top margin to 0 0.8 by using this or type it change everything and then click OK they might ask you to change the orientation from portrait to landscape you can do that uh, they might ask you to highlight something will be highlighted and say split this into two columns you can do that they might ask you to up insert breaks so one is from here insert page break the other one is where it gets a little specific and they'll say insert a next page break so you'll have to do it from here or a continuous break and I've done a, a video on this topic if you need to understand it it's a really good thing to know 
and I'll briefly show you about uh, breaks the next page breaks so if I click here and I click on breaks and I say next page what it means is that everything after that line will be on a new page continuous break will break the page into two parts however the information won't go to a new page so I'll show you next page and you see what happened is everything got pushed after that to a new page so the information is now in two different pages and you don't see the break here because to see the breaks which is an hidden element you'll have to go to the home button and then click on the show and hide button which I had mentioned earlier at the start so you click it now I can see the break now if I want to remove the break I click in the front and I hit the delete button on the keyboard and now the breaks removed and now the documents been merged into one page again so and and the hidden elements also show you where you hit enter by that symbol so that's why the show and hide button is useful. A question might be there about line numbers, which is where it puts like one, two, three on all the lines. I believe that might be useful in some um, law documents so you can tell people what number to look at or any other document where you want to highlight which line people should be looking at. So you can actually put a continuous numbers one, two, three, four all the way down. So that's the page layout. Uh, in references, uh, you may want to be familiar with table of contents. That is, you know, when you have a book or any essay or something and you've got all the different topics and you wanted to create a table of contents on your first page with the page numbers listed, this is how you do it. And the way it works is that when you have a title, I can highlight it and I, in the home, I make it heading one. So chapter titles will be heading one subtopics within the chapter will be heading two, and so that when I go to my blank page and I try to insert the table of contents it will automatically put that for me um, you get questions about adding footnotes you can do it from here or endnotes you can do it from here um, you may ask get questions about inserting citations which is when you're writing a research paper and you got information from some books or website you insert a new source and you just follow the information they've given you whether it's a book or a website just fill up the information and on the last page you'll add your bibliography and you can change the style from APA to whichever style they want you to be in the question so that pretty much covers up that uh, will come to mailings in the mailings you will get questions about mail merge and before I get to mail merge I'll just talk about envelopes and labels so if they ask you to print one envelope you go to in the mailings you go to envelopes and then you type the address if they've given you one and then we just have to choose to print it so you type the delivery address and if they give you the return address that too and then you print and if they ask you to change something about it you go to options and then you change the size which usually you don't get that question um, if there was something about e-postage there is the button if they ask you to print labels you go to labels and then you put the address uh, you may get to choose the options and change the label to whatever the label company is and the number and then you click OK and then you print or you can go to new documents so it will show you all your labels on that page uh, so now we'll talk about mail merge so you might get a question they say start mail merge so you can go to start mail merge step by step and to show this I've got a different document that I'll use so usually you'll get questions here is about insert a merge field so you click here and then I can say insert first name so you'll get those questions space insert drop down last name I've done a 30 25 30 minutes video on this topic so it'll be really good if you want to watch it so you understand the whole whole idea and it's also good to know in your day-to-day -day life and you might get questions about preview results so I click it so I actually see the names that I've actually typed for this document and I remove it uh, you may get to edit the recipient list so you click the edit recipient list and you click here and then you click edit so you can type a new entry or you can correct any of the mistakes and the last thing could be um, from the finish and merge they might say print the documents or send an email message or edit individual documents so either one could be there if you got a questions about applying some rules so you could you may need to follow that button or match fields which I've never seen but uh, 
it may if it comes up you can use that uh, another one that you might come across is they might say add an address block so you just use the address block and they might say which one to choose or they'll say leave it as it is the default so they'll actually tell you these things and you click OK now when I go to preview the address and everything shows up and uh, to fix this I can highlight this so that the empty lines are not there on the home I can make it no spacing so if you ever get a question about no spacing style that's what the no spacing does because normal actually leaves empty lines so that's under mailing so this is the mail merge related questions under review you get questions about spelling and grammar which you can click it and start the whole process up so if I click it and I can ignore or ignore all or I can change something Um, you can get in questions about thesaurus, so you can click it. Uh, you can also highlight something and then right click on it and you get questions about synonyms that you can choose from. You can also translate a word to a different language. Um, you can also add a comment from here. Uh, you, you might get questions about track changes, so they might say that go through your document and accept and reject the track changes. Track changes is when I send you a file and you made some changes and you were tracking all the changes so that I can accept or reject them. So you have to turn it on. Now as I go about making changes they are being tracked. So when you get it or when I get it I can go through it and I can I can accept something, go to next and then I can reject something and then the whole document will be checked and tracked and uh, from here I can change this to no markup or just original to see my original document uh, you might get questions about comparing two documents so I had doc3 and I had doc document 3.1 so I can actually compare to see what's the difference between both of them so you may get a question about that so you to use the compare you click here and then you can choose whether you want to combine like you can take two different documents and you can merge it into one or you just want to compare two documents to see which elements you want to accept or not so you click it and then you choose the original document so if it's already open this is doc3 you choose it and then you browse to the other file if it was open you will see it in the list here too and then you click OK and then that way you'll be able to see what's going on and what parts to accept and what are the changes that have happened in this document so that's the compare thing and uh, this is another uh, way to add passwords to your document so you click here and um, you choose limit formatting and then you say start enforcing protection and then you put the password if you didn't want to do it the other way you can also do it from file and you can do the protect document from here restrict editing so you can do it from two different places uh, I haven't seen uh, many questions related to this I have seen questions related to adding a password when you are saving it so so that is important and this is also another way of restricting if you get a questions about restricting format so you click here click in the check mark and then you can start enforcement you're almost at the end. Just a few more questions under view. You might get questions say, uh, look at the outline. So you can go to view outline. Um, you can go to view the draft or the read mode, which is a new mode that they've added where you see the document in a nicer way, where you can read it easily. You can also use some of the buttons here on the bottom. This is the first button is the read mode. Second is the print layout. Third one is the web layout. And I can use the zoom in and zoom out and you can also use the zooms from here and I can use see the ruler so I can see my margin otherwise you don't see it it's there it's just not visible and the last thing I want to talk about is macro so you might get a very simple questions about saying either run a macro or create a simple macro you click on macro record macro give it a name whatever they want it to be and then click OK and that could be it so I'll just click keyboard and you can also assign a shortcut so I can say control L something that's not being used like control X is for cut so you cannot use that and I click assign and I close this 
And now if I type something, and I go back here and I stop the macro. And you get a question about running a macro. So you click here under view, and then you go to view macros, and then whatever the macro name is, you click it, and then you run it. So you see that word shows up. So you won't be finding too much of a questions about this macro. So that should do it. I think it's around 50 to 60 some questions that I've covered. Uh, I wish you all the best.